This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Greetings, my friends. So happy to tell you, today's show is being brought to you by The Butcher Shop. Purveyors of highly sought after 100% Australia non crossbred bred YVR9 plus briskets. And as always, they're handpicked just for you. Do you know The Butcher Shop has been retailing the finest meats for more than 15 years? And every week they're shipping out competition quality meats to many of the biggest teams in the competition scene across the nation. Simply put, teams who use The Butcher Shop win, and they win often. Even if you're not a competitor, you deserve the finer cuts in life. Great news for you. The Butcher Shop is shipping some of the finest prime, dry-aged Australian Wagyu and Japanese Wagyu steaks to people just like you and me who aspire to be the kings and queens of the cul-de-sac. There's no excuse for you not to try it this year. You know, the Butcher Shop is also shipping some of the finest Berkshire, Compart Duroc, Allegiance Duroc, and Prairie Fresh All-Natural Pork. It is in stock, and again, it's hand-picked just for you. Let's review. The best competition briskets, they got that. The best pork selection, they got that. Giving you better overall options to cook at home, they got that. So give the Butcher Shop a call today, 850-458-8782. That's 850-458-8782. You mentioned the Barbecue Central Show. They're giving you 10% off your entire order each and every time. Also, you go check them out on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Butcher Shop. Shop spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. The Butcher Shop, home of the 100% Australian non-crossbred Wylara 9 Plus Briskets. Today we're going to take a jump back to 2014 and take in part two of Greg's conversation with Chef Barry, Barry Martin. Here in Seattle, I lived on the water in a, in a floating home. People call them houseboats, but it was a little shack on logs, kind of like a Sleepless in Seattle. And I lived just about a quarter mile or so from the University of Washington uh, uh, Husky Stadium. And their claim to fame for tailgating, unlike any place else that I'm aware of, is hundreds of boats raft up right outside the stadium, and you tailgate on the aft of boats and on rafts. And I'd take my little uh, Zodiac over there with a six-pack of beer, and I'd find somebody who wanted to let me climb on board, and we'd we'd eat. And that was kind of a fun tailgating. What, What kind of tailgating I wonder your listeners do? Well, uh, this listener goes down to the Muni lot downtown Cleveland when the Browns are getting ready, and we throw down like champions. Because yeah. Lord knows we don't show up on the field. So it's allowed. See, some of the some of the big cities don't allow it anymore. Oh yeah, Muni lot uh, for generations, nice. fifty and sixty years. It's just yeah. you know you're driving down to the uh, the barbecue capital of the North Coast, yeah. Cleveland, and then there's this just large surface lot off the highway. Uh, yeah. Two, three hundred yards in length and in width, um, which is mostly used during the day for uh, commuters to get into the city and uh, through our large medical campuses. But on a sun on a Sunday in Lake Erie, um, <laughs> this place turns into uh, really a uh, loony bin. But perhaps even more than that, a uh, a a gourmet for the backyard chef, uh, buses, barbecues, grills. Yeah. I mean, and it's uh, you know, Cleveland is more of a a niche city in the fact that you can go to to this portion of the city and you're going to get this kind of ethnicity, and you can go to this portion of the city and get a completely different kind. It's not just you know one style. You're going to get fifteen or, or twenty different ethnicities uh, ethnicities in there, and, and regions and styles of cooking and. Uh, if you can get in there and get out alive, it's uh, probably one of the best tailgates that you can actually get into in the entire NFL or perhaps even collegiate seasons. Well, you know, uh, uh, one of the fellows on Facebook, Midnight Oil Steve Ray, yeah. uh, who was a big fan and, and of you guys and everybody else, he said that the best tailgate venues, in his opinion, are Ole Miss, Alabama, Tennessee, Fandy, and uh, Florida. And I, that speaks to where maybe his geographical presence. Yeah, the Southeastern Conference. Uh, just a little <laughs> bit. I think that's what he's talking about. Now, uh, I haven't been to, a, to an Oakland Raiders uh, tailgating party. When they were in L.A. and I was living there, I used to go to their tailgating parties, and they would get a little dicey. 
but a lot of fun, a lot of craziness. And what you spoke to something that was interesting, and I think it's a great thing about outdoor cooking that we often forget because those of us who, I don't compete, but I pay attention to the competition circuit, you know, you're very focused on what you're doing. Everybody talks brisket, everybody talks butt, everybody talks ribs, everybody talks chicken, and that's what they focus, focus, focus. Yep. You go to a tailgating event, and there are kind of all kinds of foods being cooked outdoors on grills, on cookers, on amazing things, and it's so much fun. That's the joy of outdoor cooking, don't you think? Oh, absolutely, Barry. And uh, by the way, we're talking with Barry Martin. Welcome to the cookout.com. This is his website. Uh, you can also call him CB if you want. That's his handle <laughs> out there on the worldwide Internet. Um, you know, as, as far as tailgating is concerned, you know, do you have... Uh, suggestions that you know either you've learned through trade and through experience yes. or perhaps from uh, listeners that you think are important things that people want to consider when getting into the tailgate season here well you know i think i think people who have tailgated a lot and do it all the time have a list and so they they do the checklist they know what their equipment is they know they've got all the wipes all the cleanup they know they've got the extra ice they got the extra they've got the list so having a list of what you're supposed to take and then an assignment of who's supposed to bring what knowing who's your backup, because people forget. But one of the most important things, and I see this sometimes, it makes me nervous, is both the safety when you're dealing with some kind of fire, right? Uh, I, I, I always carry my barbecue bucket, which is, you know, I just put a tool thing around a, a, one of those Home Depot buckets. Yep. Um, I always carry a fire extinguisher. You're dealing with fire, you're dealing with, you never know. And it's a good thing to have and some kind of little first aid kit. But safety, food safety, keeping things cold enough and keeping things warm enough. Those are the big mistakes I see. And that'll ruin a tailgate party. That'll ruin somebody's weekend big time if they pick up a little bug from the food that hasn't been handled safely. Or, you know, if there's an injury and and nobody wants an injury. But people get lax when it comes to food safety. Here's uh, here's another thing I'm going to throw into that because of the, the food safety stuff. Uh, especially in a in a tailgating situation, and obviously uh, for the untrained competition person, this could happen easily at a competition as well. But since we're talking about tailgating, uh, the potential of cross contamination. So let's say uh, you have your chicken and whatever in a cooler, but it's full of ice. You break it all out, you cook it all down, and uh, I need somewhere to put this extra beer. So you jam it in there with the cooler that just had the chicken in it. And now Timmy the drunk grabs one out of the ice bucket, and he, now he's got food poison. Right. Gotta and so the careful. whole notion of food safety, and people just, you know, they get, they get lax, and they think, oh, I've been doing this for years. And, and that's it, it's just something that's very important. So I won't tell anybody how to tailgate, but those are the two things. Have a list of all your equipment. Have a list of all your stuff. And prep as much stuff as possible. I've seen some guys who bring a full kitchen, and they've got the big RV and stuff, and they can do that. But otherwise, you know, it's prep it and and then the food safety issue of how to pack and how to keep things warm and how to keep things cool. Most important things, don't you think? Safety is key. I agree with everything you just said. Now, as far as getting this stuff prepared and ready to eat, you have you know, what has now become a veritable cornucopia of cookers to choose from to you know, throw aways to you know, the big uh, models that you're going to see on uh, toes and hitches and then everything in between. Uh, through your time working with some of the major manufacturers, being out on trails and seeing all these different kind of cookers, do you see ones that you would suggest or uh, ones that you think might fit you know, in, in better regions or, or styles than others? Just seemed timely to me. Tailgating's right around the corner. It's right on top of us. CB, what a great guest. Uh, I don't know what happened to the website. It's gone. I don't know what happened to Chef Barry. He seems to be gone. I don't know. I, I've... But it was a thing back in the day. Chef Barry was a thing back in the day. And the golden days uh, seem to be gone. I could go on and on about that, but I won't. Hope you enjoyed these last two episodes. Want to get in touch with me? John, J-O-N, John, at the BBQCentralShow.com. I'd love to do a show for you. And until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less, I'm your host, John Solberg. I look forward to talking to you again soon.